The best choice here is the AIDP. Let's look at some of the imaging features that make AIDP the best choice here. On pre contrast T1, you can see the image is essentially normal. This highlights the fact that if you suspect something acute inflammatory or acute infectious, you really do need contrast to make the proper diagnosis. On the post contrast, you can clearly see there is smooth enhancement throughout the cardiac nerve root. The distribution is bilateral and relatively symmetric. That's a classic. And typically distribution is anterior nerve root involvement more so than the posterior nerve root. In some cases that you can see involvement of both anterior and posterior nerve roots, but classically anterior nerve roots tend to involve more so than the posterior nerve root. AIDP is better known as Guillain-Barre. This is an autoimmune process and often post-viral. So a classic symptom would be a patient presented with some type of viral infection, perhaps one week before the presentation. And the symptom classically is rapidly progressive ascending paralysis. And sometimes the cranial nerve can be involved. Again, this highlights the fact that if you don't have contrast, you can miss the diagnosis. So let's look at some of the choices that does not work as well in this case. Perhaps the main imaging differential diagnosis is CIDP, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyreticular neuropathy. This is considered a chronic form of Guillain-Barre. So the nerve roots tend to be more bulky for CIDP, but overall it could be very difficult to distinguish um, imaging alone. So the clinical context is important. If you suspect a AIDP, but patient has symptoms last more than six to eight weeks, then perhaps you're looking at the chronic form, so CIDP. For choice A, arachnoiditis. Now, arachnoiditis can present with one or three forms. Commonly, you can present with either this type, where you have all the nerve root adhering to the side of the thecal sac, give you this empty thecal sac appearance, or you can see the nerve root clump together. This is the same patient about three years ago. You can see back then it was normal. The nerve roots are evenly distributed throughout the thecal sac and free floating. And three years, three years later, the nerve root has clumped together, present with arachnoiditis. In this different patient, this is empty thecal sac. There's a rare third type in that the fecal sac and the nerve root were clumped together, forming one single mass-like lesion in the central part of the spinal canal. That is a form that I've never seen personally. What about for choice B, drop metastasis? With drop metastasis, typically, rather than presenting with smooth enhancement throughout the nerve roots, the classic picture for drop men is a nodular enhancement in the fecal sac. In this case, you can see there are nodularity within the dorsal aspect of the fecal sac, as well as a large drop man within the dependent portion of the fecal sac. That's more classic rather than smooth enhancement throughout all the cardiac nerve roots. In this case, the patient has history of magioblastoma status post resection. You can see within the posterior fossa, you have diffuse lateral meningeal disease. What about choice C, tethercore syndrome? Now, tethercore syndrome is a clinical diagnosis. But on imaging, if you see a low-lying conus, you should suspect the patient may have a tethercore syndrome. Normally, the conus terminates at the level of L23. That's probably the lowest level of normal. In this case, you can see the patient has a low-lying conus terminating at L45 level. That's due to presence of a intrathecal lipoma. You can see that on the pre-contrast T1, it's bright on T1, and there is a signal dropout after a fat saturation sequence on T2. However, even patients do not have a low-lying conus, patient may still present with a tethercore syndrome. And sometimes you can present it with a small fatty phaidon, which is more commonly seen with a large lipoma. So the best choice here is choice D, Guillain-Barre. That is all for this particular case. Thanks for your attention and good luck on your board exam.